Welcome to Sedona. I'm Captain Jess Molina, and I'll be your instructor. For this lesson, we're gonna start on the ground and focus on some basic concepts. Fundamentals every pilot needs to know before hitting the skies. This is your plane, a classic, the Cessna 152. Take a look around it. In the simulator, anytime you want, you can easily switch to cursor mode. The cursor is handy for interacting with menus and cockpit controls or instruments. As you can see, activating the cursor also displays the toolbar. The toolbar is a quick access menu that allows you to control various aspects of the simulation. Try to find and open the basic controls panel. Controls panel is a useful reminder of the button layout for the devices you're currently using. Now try to find and open the camera panel in the toolbar. The camera panel allows you to access the various views and camera modes of the simulation. Go ahead and close all the panels for now. Right now, we are in the external view mode. Let's switch to cockpit view next. In front of you is the yoke, the primary means of controlling the aircraft. In the simulation, you'll be controlling the aircraft with your peripherals of choice. So let's hide the yoke for now. Some instruments allow multiple interactions. For example, rotating a dial clockwise or counterclockwise. In these cases, you need to lock the cursor onto them in order to interact. For example, take a look at the clock in the middle of the dashboard. Go ahead and lock the cursor on it. Now change the clock time. You can unlock the cursor once you're ready. For now, we're done with the cursor, so go ahead and hide it. All right, as we've seen, when you wanna look around you, it's easy to rotate the camera, but you can also move it freely in the cockpit to get a better view of anything you wanna see, even through a window to look outside. Pro tip, once you find a camera position you like, you can save a shortcut to easily get back to that view anytime. Now, reset the camera to its original position. Then try switching to your custom one again. All right, that covers all the main camera functions available in the simulation. Try to familiarize yourself with them a bit more. Then reset the camera to its original position whenever you're done.
great. Let's get you familiar with the aircraft, a Cessna 152, and a few commands to navigate it through the skies. In front of you is the yoke. The yoke is like a steering wheel, more or less. Turn it left or right to control the ailerons and bank the aircraft into turns. Look at the trailing edge of the wings while turning the yoke to see the effect on the ailerons. Okay. Now, the difference between the yoke and a steering wheel is you can pull or push on the yoke. This controls the elevator at the back of the aircraft to make it climb or descend. Look at the horizontal stabilizer while you pull on the yoke. You can see how it affects the elevator. Nice. Down at your feet are the rudder pedals. They steer the aircraft when you're on the ground. The upper part of the pedals also control your brakes. In the air, they control the rudder at the end of the vertical stabilizer to yaw the aircraft. This is mostly for small corrections. For coordinating turns or compensating for a plane's tendency to pull left during takeoffs and climbs. Look at the vertical tail while operating the pedals to see the effect on the rudder. Great. Last but not least, the throttle is located near the center of the cockpit. Pushing forward will increase power. Pulling back will decrease power. First, look at the throttle and select it. Keep it selected and push it forward to increase power. Power is increased. Now, pull it back to decrease power. Power is decreased. Now we'll do the same without focusing on it. Deselect the throttle. Look away from the throttle and increase power. Set your throttle to idle. Excellent. When the engine is on, you'll be able to see the power change on your RPM indicator. You'll find it on the right side of the dashboard. This tells you how fast the engine is spinning in hundreds of revolutions per minute. Next, take a look at your current speed on the airspeed indicator. It's on the left in the main instrument panel. It measures the speed in knots. To check your altitude, look to the altimeter. It's on the right side of the main instrument panel. The altimeter has three hands, similar to a clock. The long, thick pointer indicates 100-foot intervals. The short, thick one is 1,000-foot intervals. And the long, thin one, 10,000-foot intervals. That's all for today. Next time, we'll see how it feels in the air.
I've got to say, you chose a great day to go flying. This session, we'll get started with some basic controls. Sound good? First things first, let's get familiar with your surroundings. Out your side windows, you can see we have great visibility over Sedona today. This is Red Rock territory. Beautiful, isn't it? See if you can spot the Sedona airport. The runway should be a pretty easy landmark to find. There you go. Visual confirmation on the airport. We already talked about basic controls while we were on the ground. Time to see how it all feels in the air. The aircraft is currently set to a cruise attitude. The position it should be in for regular flight. All right, now let's try banking into a turn by moving the yoke. I'll go first. general rule, you always want to keep your turns under 30 degrees. Go ahead and try rolling to the right. You have controls. Turn right, toward the city of Sedona. Sedona, let's try climbing up and down. Gently pull on the yoke to climb. Give it a try. That's good. Excellent. For the descent, it's the same principle, except you're pushing on the yoke. Go ahead, gently pitch down. That's good. Okay, time to find the airport again. Look around, and when you found it, make a turn in that direction.
Excellent. Now that you're more familiar with the aircraft and the surroundings, the next step is to go deeper into handling and techniques. Soon enough, you'll be able to enjoy trips all on your own. To help demonstrate pitch, I've drawn three lines on the windshield. Notice how the middle line matches the horizon while we're flying level. This is the cruise attitude. The lower dotted line is the climb attitude, and the upper one is the descent attitude. Let's dig deeper into what that means. Pull back gently on the yoke until the climb attitude line matches the horizon. Then maintain that attitude. According to your altimeter, we're gaining altitude. But we're losing airspeed, proving you can't avoid basic physics while making a climb. Keep working on it, you'll get better. Now let's level back out. Our speed is increasing and our altitude is stable. That's good. Push gently on the yoke until the descent attitude line matches the horizon. Then maintain that attitude. As expected, with the nose down attitude, our altitude is decreasing while our speed is picking up. Great. Okay, bring us back to level flight. Now your speed is decreasing and your altitude is stable. That's okay. I think a bit more practice may be a good idea. Try to make only small adjustments to your pitch to avoid overcorrection. To help demonstrate pitch, I've drawn three lines on the windshield. Notice how the middle line matches the horizon while we're flying level. This is the cruise attitude. The lower dotted line is the climb attitude, and the upper one is the descent attitude. Let's dig deeper into what that means. Pull back gently on the yoke until the climb attitude line matches the horizon. Then maintain that attitude. According to your altimeter, we're gaining altitude. But we're losing airspeed, proving you can't avoid basic physics while making a climb. Excellent. Now let's level back out. 
Our speed is increasing and our altitude is stable. All right. Push gently on the yoke until the descent attitude line matches the horizon. Then maintain that attitude. As expected, with a nose-down attitude, our altitude is decreasing while our speed is picking up. That's good. Okay, bring us back to level flight. Now your speed is decreasing and your altitude is stable. Nice. Try to make only small adjustments to your pitch to avoid overcorrection. To help demonstrate pitch, I've drawn three lines on the windshield. Notice how the middle line matches the horizon while we're flying level. This is the cruise attitude. The lower dotted line is the climb attitude, and the upper one is the descent attitude. Let's dig deeper into what that means. Pull back gently on the yoke until the climb attitude line matches the horizon. Then maintain that attitude. According to your altimeter, we're gaining altitude. But we're losing airspeed, proving you can't avoid basic physics while making a climb. Excellent. Now let's level back out. Our speed is increasing and our altitude is stable. That's good. Push gently on the yoke until the descent attitude line matches the horizon. Then maintain that attitude. As expected, with a nose down attitude, our altitude is decreasing while our speed is picking up. Great. Okay, bring us back to level flight. Now your speed is decreasing and your altitude is stable. That's good. Try to make only small adjustments to your pitch to avoid overcorrection. For this lesson, we're going to use a line drawn on the windshield to indicate the cruise attitude. I've also added another dotted line to help you bank properly for left turns. Gently move the yoke to the left until the dotted line matches up with the horizon. Then maintain that bank. back out. All right. 
For the next step, turning to the right, let's see how you do on your own without any markings. At the top of your attitude indicator, there's a series of notches representing 10 degrees each. As a general rule, you always want to keep your turns under 30 degrees. Start banking right until you're lined up with the second notch to the right on the attitude indicator. Then maintain that 20 degree bank while remaining at the same altitude until I ask you to stop. Let's talk about the throttle. If you have the need for speed, then the throttle's for you. Full control over the power output of the engine. In the Cessna 152, that relays directly to the RPM displayed on the tachometer. Pull back on the throttle to reduce RPM to 1800. You want to reduce RPM to 1800. Look how your speed and altitude are also decreasing. That's okay. Okay, let's throttle back up to 2400 RPM. now. As long as you maintain the same attitude, your altitude will keep climbing as well. Nice. I think a bit more practice may be a good idea.
Let's talk about the throttle. If you have the need for speed, then the throttle's for you. Full control over the power output of the engine. In the Cessna 152, that relays directly to the RPM displayed on the tachometer. Pull back on the throttle to reduce RPM to 1800. your speed and altitude are also decreasing. Excellent. Okay, let's throttle back up to 2400 RPM. Your speed is increasing now. As long as you maintain the same attitude, your altitude will keep climbing as well. Nice. That was excellent. With piston planes like this Cessna, it's common to have power targets defined in RPM. In this lesson, let's take a look at the relationship between attitudes and power settings. Attitude plus power equals performance. We are currently at 5,500 feet in a cruise attitude. The aircraft's nose is positioned under the horizon and cruise power is at 2,300 RPM. Try to reduce power to 2,000 RPM while maintaining 5,500 feet. Great. You probably noticed, to maintain altitude, you need to pitch the nose up. You could just keep pulling on the yoke to hold steady, but that's not really a precise means of control. Probably better to adjust your trim wheel until you don't need to push or pull on the yoke. Drag the trim down when you need to set the nose up. Drag it up to set the nose down. Try adding trim to keep us at 5,500 feet without increasing throttle. You put your plane in a dangerous situation. You probably noticed, to maintain altitude, you need to pitch the nose up. You could just keep pulling on the yoke to hold steady, but that's not really a precise means of control. Try it out. Trim the aircraft to maintain 5,500 feet. Probably better to adjust your trim wheel until you don't need to push or pull on the yoke. Drag the trim down when you need to set the nose up. Drag it up to set the nose down. Try adding trim to keep us at 5,500 feet without increasing throttle. Try it out. Trim the aircraft to maintain 5,500 feet. Keep working on it. You'll get better. You're too high now. Increase power to 2300 RPM while maintaining 5500 feet. Get us back to a cruise attitude. Excellent. Now adjust the trim.
put your plane in a dangerous situation. Now, adjust the trim. All right. You did well, but you can do better. The way I was taught, when you adjust the trim, you make course changes at first to remove pressure on the yoke. Then small adjustments to find the perfect setting to keep your desired attitude. If you feel your pitch slipping and need to get back to the proper attitude, don't worry. Just pull on the yoke, then dial in the right trim. That's the key to straight and level flight. of maneuvering a plane through the air isn't a mystery to you anymore. Now it's time to test the skills you've learned. As you can see, we're cruising at 6,000 feet on a north heading of 360 degrees. Start by descending to 5,500 feet while maintaining a northerly heading. Start descending. While descending, reduce throttle to avoid overspeed. If your speed is in the yellow arc of the airspeed indicator, reduce throttle to idle and pull gently on the yoke to slow down. That's okay. Now climb to 6,000 feet and turn to a south heading. On the Cessna 152, you need full power to climb effectively. You put your plane in a dangerous situation. Now climb to 6,000 feet and turn to a south heading. On the Cessna 152, you need full power to climb effectively. good, but try to climb faster in the future. All right, next exercise. Maintain your heading of 180 degrees, stay at 6,000 feet, and adjust your airspeed to 80 knots.
The art of maneuvering a plane through the air isn't a mystery to you anymore. Now it's time to test the skills you've learned. As you can see, we're cruising at 6,000 feet on a north heading of 360 degrees. Start by descending to 5,500 feet while maintaining a northerly heading. When you feel ready, start descending. While descending, reduce throttle to avoid overspeed. If your speed is in the yellow arc of the airspeed indicator, reduce throttle to idle and pull gently on the yoke to slow down. That's okay. Now climb to 6,000 feet and turn to a south heading. On the Cessna 152, you need full power to climb effectively. You can start the climb when you're ready. Nice. The turn was good, but try to climb faster in the future. All right, next exercise. Maintain your heading of 180 degrees, stay at 6,000 feet, and adjust your airspeed to 80 knots. Reduce your speed. That's good. Your speed was well managed, but your altitude needs to be more accurate. You did well, but you can do better.